When the writer came in and told you that your son was Jeff Bezos, what was your reaction? He asked me if I knew who Jeff Bezos was. And what did you say? I said, uh, no, the name kind of sounds familiar, but I don't know. It is a dream of every ambitious young man to be able to call up his mother and tell her that she's financially free. For him to speak to his father and explain to him that his days of providing are over and that he can finally put his feet up and enjoy the quiet, refined luxury of early retirement. It is quite another nightmare for a child to ask his parents to give him $250,000 in order to achieve this idyllic dream. And yet, such was the dilemma of a young Jeff Bezos who was forced to walk the tightrope between genius and stupidity and ask his mother and stepfather not for a few months of rent money or help paying for a car payment, but an investment of a quarter of a million dollars. Indeed, Jeff was asking for an investment that, if proved to be foolish, would end not just in financial turmoil, but the breakdown of the entire Bezos family. But if the investment was successful, it would cement the legacy of the Bezos family name in the history books forever and open the doors to a life that can only be dreamed of by the lower 99%. In today's episode, we will take you on the pivotal journey of a newly minted 1% family, birthed from two parents that invested in their child to create the largest e-commerce company the world has ever seen, as we describe. How the Bezos family turned $250,000 into 1.5 trillion. One of my jobs as the leader of Amazon is to encourage people to be bold. It's incredibly hard to get people to take bold bets, and you need to encourage that. And a few big successes compensate for dozens and dozens of things that didn't work. Bold bets, AWS, Kindle, Amazon Prime, our third-party seller business, all of those things are examples of bold bets that, that, that did work. With a net worth hovering around $180 billion, Jeff Bezos is not just rich. He's the very pinnacle of what it means to have real generational multidimensional wealth. And the man has set new standards for what is humanly possible, with a true monetary value too vast for the human mind to even begin to comprehend. For instance, it was estimated that in 2023, Bezos made $7.9 million every single hour, or approximately $5,000 every single second. To put it another way, by the time I finish this sentence, Bezos will already be the best part of $20,000, richer than when I began. Naturally, Bezos' bottomless pot of gold largely comes from the evergreen rainbow of his Amazon shares, of which he holds a handy 9.56% stake. Elsewhere, he fully owns the fairly recently developed space exploration startup, Blue Origin. Now with no IPO released, we can't give you an exact figure of its value, but the company did recently sign a contract with NASA valued worth 3.4 billion, which is just pocket change for Bezos at this point. And with such a high net worth, obviously comes a life of unprecedented luxury, which Bezos has embraced with open arms. The first place to start when looking at the life of luxury Bezos enjoys is, of course, his 470-foot mega yacht, the hallmark of any burgeoning old money club applicant. Equipped with a pool, multiple stories and a helipad, this thing is the ultimate counter-argument to any money-can't-buy happiness argument. And with a price tag of $500 million, it's a luxury that only a man so financially capable as Bezos could even consider purchasing. And when he's not soaking in vitamin D on the top deck of his mega yacht, Bezos is reclining in his personal time machine, a $65 million private jet. Because for a man who earns more than most families' entire net worth in an hour, queuing for boarding with the other mortals just isn't something you do. And on the subject of time, what better way to show off your wealth than by purchasing a $42 million clock in the mountains of Texas? Sure. It's not quite as practical as a Casio. When you're that rich, who cares? But we're not done yet, because we haven't even mentioned the divorce settlement that Mackenzie Scott received when her marriage ended with the business tycoon. When most couples file for divorce, they'd be happy to win the better half of the coin collection or the nice kitchen knives. But when you're divorcing Jeff Bezos, you're getting the best part of 38 billion. In fact, just by divorcing Bezos, Scott has become one of the richest women alive. Furthermore, even Bezos' parents have also been able to indulge in the fruits of their son's labor. 
His mother, Jacqueline, and his stepfather, Mike Bezos, are worth a cool 30 billion US, and it's safe to say that they can win any Proud of My Son contest. This wealth has, as mentioned, stemmed from that initial $250,000 investment that they gave to Jeff, and has since proven to be one of the largest returns on investments anyone has ever seen. In fact, Jacqueline Bezos's story started just above the poverty line, but today she enjoys a life of extravagant spending. In 2019, for instance, Jackie and Mike dropped a casual $34 million on a Miami beach house, fit with six bedrooms, nine bathrooms, and direct ocean access. However, Jackie has never forgotten her roots and helped to found the Bezos Family Foundation, a non-profit organization which helps to fund education in deprived areas. Therefore, when you look at the Bezos family, it looks like they're living the definition of a perfect luxury life. They've got the money, the cars, the fame, and even the ability to give back to those who need it. So by now, you might just be thinking about how this empire of dollar bills ever amassed itself. Well, to understand this, we need to go back, way back, before Bezos was born and before the family ever gave him that pivotal loan. In fact, the story truly begins all the way back in 18th century Scandinavia. So when we were kids, we would spend every summer on our grandfather's ranch in South Texas. Yeah. One of the things that I think we learned to value, the role that resourcefulness, self-reliance yeah, plays. Sure. First of all, we had a very fortunate, lucky childhood. So that's that kind of you know, self-reliance and resourcefulness. Interestingly, Bezos isn't actually the biological surname of the Amazon pioneer. He was originally born Jeffrey Jorgensen to his biological father, John Jorgensen, and Jorgensen is a name derived from Denmark. As you might have heard, Scandinavian names have historically been formed to address an individual's father, and almost all end in Sen. For example, let's take the famous actress Scarlett Johansson. Her surname literally means son of Hans. The same is true for Olsen, as in the Olsen twins of Full House and fashion fame, and of course, Jorgensen. Now, the furthest known ancestor of Jeff is one Morten Jorgen Benson, who was born in 1786. At this period of time, the name Jorgen was still a first name, and it wasn't until Jeff's great-great-grandfather was born in 1872 that the surname Jorgensen was adopted, with the exact same name being passed down to the next three sons of Morten Jorgen Benson. The Jeffrey that we know today broke this cycle, being named Jeffrey Preston Jorgensen. Bezos's mother, on the other hand, was born Jacqueline Gies, an Americanized version of the surname Guys, which was brought to England by the French after the Norman Conquest in 1066. Jacqueline and Ted sparked their romantic relationship during their impressionable high school years, residing in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and they gelled instantly, forming a tight bond. Indeed, it was a bond so tight that it led to a, shall we say, unexpected pregnancy, when Jackie was just 16 years old while they were likely on a trip in Mexico. Of course, we probably don't even need to mention that in 1960s, Central America, having a child outside wedlock, wasn't exactly encouraged. Factor in their less than stable financial situation. And the idea of a child probably wasn't one that sparked excitement in the couple's eyes. Nevertheless, the couple decided to make the best of a bad situation, getting married in Jackie's parents' house before the birth of their child in 1963. Such a move was made, not necessarily out of infatuation, but more out of a drive to ensure that their child wasn't shunned by the community. Just a few months later, on the 12th of January 1964, Jeffrey Preston Jorgensen was born. However, Jeff only kept his Scandinavian surname for a few years, as the marriage between his mother, Jacqueline, and father, John, quickly broke down after just 17 months. The reasons for this divorce, according to Jackie, were because Ted became a pretty terrible person once their son was born, often staying up late and drinking and completely, you know, forgetting that he had a family to provide for. Bezos has never had a relationship with Ted and didn't even know he was his biological father until 2012, three years before the giver of his Scandinavian roots passed away. The Bezos name was therefore not initially a central part of the multi-billionaire's lineage. In fact, he did not bear the name until the young age of four, when the one constant in his life, his mother Jackie, married another man, one Miguel Bezos. 
Now, Jackie first met Miguel at the Bank of New Mexico, which they were both employees of in the 1960s. Miguel, an immigrant from Cuba, was working part-time to help fund his studies at Albuquerque College, and at the time, Jackie was floating jobs to rebound from her recent divorce. For the two, it was love at first sight, and in 1968, the two were married in Albuquerque. At age four, young Jeff adopted Miguel's surname, Bezos, alongside his mother. Then, after obtaining his degree in engineering, Miguel was then offered a job at Exxon Houston, where the family relocated for the majority of Bezos's childhood. Now the name Bezos itself is tied deep into the history of Mediterranean Europe, coming specifically from the country of Spain. Bezos translates to kiss in modern translation. However, now it is most commonly found in Greek families in the 21st century, which has led many to think that Bezos is of Greek descent after mistaking Miguel for his biological father. However, when we go as far back as the literature has recorded, we can see that this name actually originated in Spain. Therefore, as you can see, Bezos's lineage is one of great variety, stemming from the mountains of Denmark to the sun-kissed plains of Spain, from the throbbing heat of New Mexico to the glistening vineyards of France and medieval England. However, the early life of the Amazon pioneer would soon prove to be as diverse as his deep lineage as well. So I loved physics, and I studied physics and computer science. So I wanted to be a theoretical physicist. That's why I went to Princeton in the first place. And then I realized I was going to be a mediocre theoretical physicist. There were a few people in my classes, like in quantum mechanics and so on, who they could effortlessly do things that were so difficult for me. As we now know, Bezos experienced more family turmoil and upheaval by the age of four than most children do in their entire adolescence. He went through a divorce, changed his name, and moved to a completely different state in the space of just four years. However, once settled in Houston, his life began to take a more linear avenue. From an early age, Bezos displayed signs of genius. And when he was just a toddler, for example, Jeff took it upon himself to dismantle his crib with a screwdriver that he found on the ground, believing himself to be too old for such a childish bed. Then, when he was a little older, Bezos created a home security system for his bedroom, which warned him of anyone entering his room. All the while, Bezos's parents and siblings showed unwavering support for his incredible mind, and they chose to nourish, rather than discourage, the innovative spirit of their eldest child, a motif which later became pivotal in Bezos's future success. Bezos also found motivation by watching his father Miguel work relentlessly to give his family the best life he could afford. His nature showed Bezos from an early age what hard work really meant and idolizing his stepfather. He never failed to put in the extra effort to his academic pursuits. In his free time, he also flipped burgers at McDonald's to earn extra money to invest in his entrepreneurial inventions and pastimes. And with this hard-working nature, coupled with such an academically savvy mind, Bezos passed high school with little effort. He developed a particular fascination with the sciences, and after graduating with honors, he decided to attend Princeton University to study physics, as his idol Stephen Hawking had done before him. However, Bezos soon found himself in a myriad of complex formulas and theories that even his great mind could not comprehend. Virtually as soon as he enrolled in the course, Bezos, with a heavy heart, made the decision to switch his field of study to electronics and computer science. This decision would single-handedly put the young Bezos on a path to unfathomable greatness that even he could not comprehend. But Bezos and computer science were a match made in heaven. Unlike the physics program, everything seemed to click for Bezos, and he stormed through his university career with barely a hiccup. He graduated with the highest honors and Phi Beta Kappa in electrical engineering and computer science in 1986. With such high academic prestige, Bezos was scouted by a plethora of companies come graduation. However, instead of going down a more stable route with a higher paying firm, Bezos chose to devote his career to Fitel, a relatively new fiber optic company. There, Bezos helped to put Fintel on the map by building an original computer network from the ground up, which specialized in international finance. Working on this project seemed to light a new passion in the heart of Jeff a passion for the dollar bill. And so, in 1988, 
Bezos took yet another career path, working as a project manager at Bankers Trust. During his time at this New York firm, Bezos pioneered a new system for handling investment funds. However, even a job at a company as prestigious as Bankers Trust was not enough to quench Bezos's thirst for greatness. In 1990, he joined D.E. Shaw & Company, again employing his technological savvy to create advanced computer systems. Indeed, Bezos made such an impact at the company that in 1992, he was promoted to vice president. Better yet, at just 28 years of age, he was the youngest to ever fill the position, and by 30, he was the senior vice president of D.E. Shaw & Company, a position that most work decades to achieve. However, even this wasn't enough for the young and hungry Bezos. Despite making decent money and being respected highly in his field, he still felt that he had more potential. The idea of working for someone else and giving his energy to grow another company just didn't sit right with him. So, in his spare time, Bezos began meticulously searching for gaps in the market which he could use his skills to fill. Finally, after an exhaustive search, in 1994, he struck gold. After reading an article which detailed how the World Wide Web was growing by over 2,300% every year, the penny dropped. Bezos figured that if the internet was growing at such a rapid rate, any company which rode the wave of this growth would receive similar returns. So began the quest of planning an e-commerce store, and after researching 20 million of the most popular mail-order items, he found his vessel. Bezos was going to sell books. Our timing was good. Our, our choice of product categories, books, was a very good choice. And we did a lot of analysis on that to pick that category as the first best category for e-commerce online. But there were no guarantees that that was a good category. So that was good luck. Now, Jeff Bezos originally chose books for a few reasons. For one, there were millions upon millions of books to sell, meaning that his company would never be short on assets. And books were one of the most sold items worldwide, meaning that the well of customers would never dry out either. But after choosing his products, Bezos had to come up with a name. Eventually, he stumbled across Amazon, later explaining that the name was fitting because for one, it started with the first letter of the alphabet, and secondly, it referred to the largest river in the world, which he wanted to emulate by creating the largest e-commerce store in the world. But then came the hard part. To truly be in with a chance of success, Bezos decided he needed to move to Washington due to the state's reduced sales taxes. But to move, he first had to quit his job, a job that provided financial stability, high status, a pension and retirement plans, and one which 99% of the population would do anything to obtain. Yet, as we've seen, Bezos was not an ordinary man, and he believed in his idea with every ounce of his being. So, in 1995, Bezos quit his job and moved to Bellevue, Washington, to start his entrepreneurial voyage. At this point, Bezos had nearly everything to launch the future trillion-dollar empire. The only thing missing? Capital. Despite his high-paying career, Bezos didn't have nearly the kind of money needed to launch a store like Amazon. And instead, he needed investors. You see, for Bezos, the only option was to go to the two people who had been there with him through thick and thin, his mother and stepfather. You can only imagine the amount of pride that Jeff must have swallowed when he met his parents to inform them that he had quit his high-paying job to start a company resting on this relatively unknown entity of the internet, which needed a quarter of a million dollars of funding to even stand a chance of success. Nevertheless, with his vision in mind and faith in his heart, Bezos sat his parents down to explain his idea. During the initial pitch, Bezos detailed his meticulously crafted business plan, one which was so complex that it openly went over the heads of Miguel and Jackie. All the while, Jeff, in an immense show of honesty, emphasized that the chances of success were slim to none, and that there was a 70% likelihood that every investor would lose every penny of their money. However, watching their son's passion blaze through the pitch, Jackie and Miguel knew that Jeffrey was on the cusp of something special. Sure, they didn't quite understand what exactly they would be investing in. They were aware of their son's genius, his relentless motivation, and his hard-working nature. 
They were willing to bet every penny that they had saved on their son so that he could achieve his dreams. And so, at the end of the pitch, Jeff's parents took out the majority of their life savings, investing 250,000 in Amazon, but more importantly, their son, in return for a 6% stake in the company. Bezos proceeded to convince a further 20 individuals to invest in his idea, and after an initial round of funding, he finally had the money to launch, and on the 6th of July 1995, Amazon.com was officially born. You might think that with such a large initial investment, Bezos was able to rent out an office to run his online bookstore. However, the reality was much less glamorous. Initially, Amazon was entirely run from Bezos's garage, and the server took so much power that his wife was unable to plug in a hairdryer. And Bezos took on every business role, from CEO to delivery man, pouring blood, sweat and tears into the early days. Yet, almost instantaneously, Amazon began to take off. Despite zero marketing or publicity efforts, Amazon began to grow exponentially, to the point where Bezos was barely able to keep up with demand. By the first month, Amazon had delivered books to every single state and a further 45 countries worldwide. This trajectory only grew day by day, and within two months, Amazon was making $20,000 a week in sales. Bezos also secured an additional $8 million in funding from Kleiner Perkins Caulfield and Byers in 1995 to help the company scale. However, by 1997, Amazon hadn't actually made any substantial profits. Despite its success, costs were still high, and Bezos was reinvesting every single cent he earned back into the company to help its growth. Nevertheless, in the same year, Bezos made the decision to take Amazon public, with shares starting at just $18. There are lots of advantages to shopping online, but one of the most compelling ones is how much time you can save. The fact that you don't have to drive, park, do all those things that make life complicated when you go shopping in the physical world is a huge advantage of online shopping. And the rest is history. Able to navigate the tricky battlefield of public status, Bezos only guided Amazon to new heights in the following years, ultimately creating a household name that is not just known but loved internationally. As the company grew, Bezos began to sell more and more items beyond books, giving the company a wider scope for sales, revenue and profits. Two years after going public, Amazon was worth tens of billions, selling over 3.5 million items and redefining the scope of what an e-commerce store was capable of. It was also estimated that Bezos had a personal wealth of the best part of $10 billion at this time, and in 1999, Bezos was also named Time Magazine's Person of the Year due to his revolution of e-commerce. Even more significant milestones were surpassed in the following years. In the fourth quarter of 2001, for instance, Amazon became profitable for the first time, reporting a net positive of $5.1 million. 2006 was another pivotal date for Amazon, as the company launched its first cloud computing service, of which it is now the largest provider in the world. Today, Amazon is loved by a majority of citizens in almost every country it operates in, and it has famously been reported to be America's most trusted institution of sorts, surpassing even the US military in positive feelings ratings among Americans. Gone are the days of waiting four days for your parcel or going outside to buy your items. Instead, Amazon offers every product you could think of, from books to homeware, at the push of a button, all delivered to your front door the next day. And thanks to thousands of reviews of every single product, the days of questioning whether the product in question is worth the money are over, as you can simply take someone else's word for it. Yet, it's not just e-commerce that Amazon has taken over, though. The company also dominates the e-book market through Audible, retail shoes through Zappos, and even food itself through Whole Foods. Amazon has arguably made the lives of nearly every user easier. And because of this, it's potentially the most relevant business in the day-to-day -day lives of most people. In fact, as of 2024, Amazon is the fifth largest company worldwide with a market cap of an eye-watering $1.61 trillion. Yearly revenue exceeds $500 billion. And it's estimated that by the year 2030, the company's market cap will exceed $2.5 trillion. And Bezos' other standalone ventures also have an incredibly wide-reaching effect. 
Blue Origin, for instance, is engaged in a contractual agreement with NASA, and through it, Bezos has further extended his reach into space, literally, thus allowing him to explore and financially benefit from the exponential growth of yet another major industry. With that all said, financial advisors suggest that getting a 10% return on your investments is a pretty good deal. Little do they know that, by putting faith in your family, you might be able to turn $250,000 into a trillion, pocket 30 billion for yourself, and receive a 12 million, yes, 12 million percent return. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. Which tech billionaire's family would you like us to feature next on this channel? We've already done the Musk family, and now the Bezos family. We're curious to hear your thoughts, and thanks again for joining us for another episode. Cheers, until next time.